So, Jim, let's talk about, as I said earlier tonight, the momentum obviously has shifted to Kamala Harris. And former President Donald Trump has to get on his A-game. He has to get out and meet the people. One of the things that you did as a young man that really got you the vote from young and old alike, when you ran for office the first time, when many doubted because of your youth, you went out and met as many people that you could, and you went where they lived, and it worked. I believe the former president needs to do what he did in 2016. He needs to come back to places like Beaver County and go visit that Shell Cracker plant to let people know he's all in on creating a better economy by building a better way for the American workforce. Good evening. Good evening, Rob. Thanks for having me on. I think you're right in, in, in many ways that when former President Trump gets to connect with people, particularly in that that rust belt, uh, that blue collar area, uh, those blue collar areas, he just, he connects with them like no other presidential candidate has in, in, in generations. So the more he's, he's connecting to folks, I think the better for his campaign. When you look at Donald Trump, what are his attributes? What do you like about him? The first word is authenticity. I mean, he, he, he's real in, in an industry, in a profession that is about as fake as Botox, to be honest, right? I mean, it's just, it's as fake as any any other industry it could be. So time and time again, voters reward authenticity. Um, I think that's why you see people like somebody like Barack Obama get elected and then turn around and somebody like Donald Trump get elected. Why candidates like Hillary Clinton tend to struggle is because I think the missing ingredient is authenticity. I will also say, you know, the evolution of Donald Trump from a political ideology has um, has moved to, uh, to the pretty conservative um, ideology. And when I say it's it's shifted, maybe his you know his his beliefs haven't necessarily shifted, but over the course of time, he has he has really, I think, energized the conservative base, almost the libertarian base of of um, of the Republican Party. And it's not just Republican Party. It's it's also the shift from the, the Democratic Party away from the Democratic Party of John F. Kennedy um, and moved more to the Democratic Party of Barack Obama. And so I think that has opened up an opportunity with his personality for Donald Trump to connect it to the moderns. And and, and I'll say this, what I really like about Donald Trump is what he has labeled as the drain the swamp mentality, right? So why does that matter? Well, I've always been a believer that the politics and the governing that is as close to the people as possible is the best, right? That some people label that as uh, a state's amendment, you know, they're, they're a state's rights kind of person, right? Well, Donald Trump, because of his frustration, I think, with the political class in Washington connects with a lot of people in places like Beaver County, Western Pennsylvania, Eastern Ohio. Um, and, and, and that is because there's a lot of distrust in Washington. I mean, let's be honest, Washington has been lying to your generation their entire lives, starting in the 60s, right? Starting in the 60s, the 70s, they have been lying to your entire generation. So it's no wonder that Donald Trump connects with people that have a frustration with Washington. You know, when I think of the lies that continue to be a part of Washington, why is it that we have been so gullible? And really, my generation in particular, we baby boomers, why do we continue to accept this? And why is it that many people still won't lean into former President Trump knowing that his game plan is what our parents had that made them the greatest generation? Why are we afraid to do that, do you think? Why are we? I think it comes down to sometimes political races are a choice between two individ individuals. And let's be honest, there have been a lot of people starting in 2016 and in 2020 and probably in 2024 are going to be like, out of 350 million Americans, these are our two choices. Now, I think that is a, you know, Donald Trump is not the lesser of two evils. I believe that four years of Donald Trump will make this country better than it is today, period. 
and I don't care about the personality stuff. I don't care about the mean tweets. Do as a political advisor, would I like it to stop? But that's that's we're not going to change it. Um, are there things that he has said and done in the past that are atypical of a presidential candidate? Sure, but that's also what makes people attract uh, attracted to him is that he doesn't care about political correctness. Um, so uh, it's a double edged sword, I think. But uh, why why does your generation still give the federal government the benefit of the doubt after they lied about so many things? And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Here's what amazes me about you. When I first heard about you, it was from my dear friend who sadly is no longer here, Jim Roddy, entrepreneur, a lot like Donald Trump, but much more refined. And I have said if he would have gotten into politics 20 years younger than he did, who knows what he could have done, maybe even become the president of the United States. But he looked at me one day and said, hey, how about this young man from Beaver County? And I had no idea who he was talking about. And then he mentioned your name. And then I heard it from others because of your family's history. My friend Joe Dentisi knew your grandfather. And I kept hearing and hearing. And when I first met you and I first heard you speak, I went, how does he have such a command? Because you were fearless. You were respectful. But you weren't afraid to punch the biggest person in the room verbally if they weren't doing enough to help the people of Beaver County. So... You have to be tough in politics. You have to have thick skin. And if you don't shake it up by making bold statements, you believe nothing will get done. And that's one of the attributes of Donald Trump. He just needs to back down a little bit, but you don't want him to completely back down. Fair statement? Yeah, I don't want him to back down. I just want him to pause a little bit more. Right. And, I, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I think there's been a massive shift. If I remember vividly watching the first presidential debate in 26 in 2020. And, and what I remember was Donald Trump had this impulse and instinct to interrupt Joe Biden when Joe Biden was probably going to talk himself into a problem. Right. Joe Biden in 2020 was probably the best player on Donald Trump's team. And in that first presidential debate, he couldn't control himself and he kept interrupting. We'll flip the script four years later. This is where I know Donald Trump is a competitor and willing to change in order to win. And I saw that obviously in the first and only debate with 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 Biden is that he let him talk. And it, it ultimately ended, that debate ended President Biden's 2024 campaign, right? Make no mistake. So therefore, he was much more disciplined this time around. And I think that is, uh, that's going to bode well for him. But are there other times where I wish he'd stick to the policy debates? Um, and the, and the top talking points about policy? Yes, I do. But I'm never I'm, I'm done second guessing this guy. 